in Blacksburg. Reigning ACC Player of the Year, Liz Kitley gets it to Taylor Soul, who's on a mission to get to the basket. Nice strong take to start the game. Taylor Soul, <laughs> new to the Virginia Tech Hokies this year, doesn't take her long to get endeared to this crowd, and it's a good one today. There is Olivia Miles. Players, you mentioned for Notre Dame, an absolute must-see player with the ball in her hand. She goes up against Kitley, who does enough to bother the shot. Offensive rebound, Kylie Watson couldn't put it back. Starting lineup for Virginia Tech, Georgia Amor running the point. Told you about Taylor Soul, Kayla King, always a three-point threat, Kayana Trailer, And of course, Kitley holding down the paint on the inside. Amor for three. She got a good look at it, though. Amor, 10 on the shot clock. King barely keeps it in. Five to shoot now for the Hokies. Trailer becoming aware of it. She takes a three. And Miles coming in for the rebound. Miles quick to the basket. Starting five she, for Notre Dame, consistent this year. You see that group out there. And that's what she wants to do. She wants to get downhill. Yeah, watch out for the pace and watch out for the three. Kayana Trailer makes it 5 nothing Virginia Tech. Another player who we usually like to see get downhill, but starting off early from the three. Sonia Citron. Another really important player for this Notre Dame team off the fingertips of West Bell. The extra pass to Trailer. She lines it up and sinks it, knocks it down. And Virginia Tech lead the ACC, averaging over eight made three-pointers per game on the season. Kitley stopped. At least initially, Soul the spin, blocked by Westbound. She and Watson working together on the defensive end. The LIB told us she thought defense was going to be the most important thing for her team in this game. We talked a lot about offense for Notre Dame coming in, but she told us, Jazz, defense has got to be good today. Yeah, for sure. She said she challenged her team to really be ready on the defensive end, locked into the scout, and there you see them double teaming, coming in, crowding the paint on that spin move by Soul. These teams both so balanced, they're deep, they've got a lot of different strengths. Not an easy scout for either team earlier today. Seven, good cut, and Citron is fouled on her way to the basket. Big game today for Kenny Brooks and, and what he has built here at Virginia Tech, getting this program to its highest ranking in program history. And while this is their first ranked opponent of the season, he'll be quick to tell you he feels they have been tested. They are ready coming into this one today. Kayla King committing the foul for Virginia Tech and Citron able to get the first point for the Irish. Now two. This is something Notre Dame does very well. They get to the free throw line more than just about anybody in the country. They make more free throws than anybody in the country, over 20 per game. Kitley trying to get to her fadeaway there. They played that scout well, sat on it. Miles skips it across. Citron. Irish 0 for 4 from the floor to start this one. Coach Ivy has to be happy with how they've started, though. They've gotten stops, and they've gotten out and started their transition. Kitley. That's easy. Miles. Not afraid to shoot. That is already five rebounds for Liz Kitley. A double-double machine. King 
you can feel the energy in this crowd go up the second that ball leaves her fingertips. Amor with the steal. Junior point guard trying to get it inside. It is a former Pokey and Dara Mabry who kicks it away. Mabry spent the first couple of years of her career at Virginia Tech. Now in her third year, her grad year at Notre Dame. Kitley off the inbounds, baseline jumper, a little strong. Deja Gregg has come on for Virginia Tech. Lauren Evo also out on the floor, number 33 for Notre Dame. Westveld. Tough for the Irish to get a lot of good looks. Great West hustle. Yeah, diving to get it back is Westveld. The game will settle. The, sh the shots will definitely start to go in. They're, they're a great offensive team, as long as they keep getting the looks that they want. Tend to shoot. Citron gets around a couple of defenders. I don't know that there's been a non-contested look for Notre Dame yet in this game. I mean, you know that Virginia Tech defense, that's what they do. They're not going to get a lot of steals and pressure you and turn you over, but they're going to force you to take contested shots. Notre Dame 0 for 7 from the floor and this trailer Checking turns it over. KK Bransford. Bransford, freshman out of Cincinnati, Ohio on the floor now, replacing Citron for Notre Dame. We know Notre Dame likes to run. Let's see what they can do here if they can finally get something clicking in the half court offensively. Evo trying to go up and over Kitley and does. They like to push pace, but they do like to play inside, inside out. First made field goal for the Irish, three point lead for Virginia Tech. Soul. Barely kept it in her fingertips. Miles swats it away. Westbell leading the break for Notre Dame. That's an offensive foul against Maddie Westbell. I love a charge. <laughs> Good start to this one. Three point lead for the Hokies in Blacksburg. Notre Dame has dominated the series overall against Virginia Tech last year in South Bend. Irish shot the ball well from the outside. Trailer led Virginia Tech with 16 points, but Olivia Miles had 24 to lead the Irish. They picked up the win. And the only meeting between the two teams, you mentioned that earlier, Jazz, that these meetings so important. They only get to play each other once. And we also brought up this storyline just a little bit. Dara Mayerby, <laughs> look at that consistency. No Super matter which consistent. uniform she's wearing, those numbers about the same. <laughs> Last year, both teams tied for third in the ACC, along with North Carolina at the end of the season. But Virginia Tech missing out the double bye in the ACC tournament, and they would lose the first game they played in Greensboro. So even though it's early, this one could wind up meaning a lot. Kitley, a bit off. Greg, somehow that ball doesn't go out of bounds. It's blocked now. I mean, you think the level of intensity is high on this floor right For sure. now? And you see Virginia Tech there with a string of offensive rebounds, and that's something that Coach Ivy said they needed to do was be able to keep them off the boards. Taylor Soul, she mentioned, was a handful at BC, so they knew what they were getting into today trying to keep her off. Soul, drag transfer, joining the Hokies this season. And in fact, this is Virginia Tech's second conference game. They're already 1-0 in ACC play. Taylor Soul went back to play her former team, Virginia Tech, winning on the road earlier this month. This is the ACC opener for the Irish. What an opener it is. Watson gets the basket. Greg went down, but no foul called either way. I think that's a good. A good no call. A nice strong move. One point lead now for the Hokies. 
Amor. Virginia Tech came flying out of the gate, got the tip, went right to Taylor Soule for a basket within seconds, but cooled off a little since then. Foul on the floor. Well, coming up next, it is number eight, NC State hosting Clemson in a sold out Reynolds Coliseum. That caps up our quadruple header today as the Wolfpack and the Tigers open up conference play. Be interesting to see NC State, of course, the reigning regular season and tournament champions in the ACC, but still without Diamond Johnson and Jada Boyd. Hokies have missed their last six. There goes that stat. She missed the, the one before, then a the little pull up, and it came right back to her, and she stayed confident and knocked down the three. Transfer. And that is a charge. This Virginia Tech defense making the Irish have to be very careful going to the basket. Wide open, late closeout, easy open three. And I love a charge. I love teams and players that sacrifice and take charges. I'm a defensive player myself. I love to see it. Is it a three-time WNBA All-First Team defensive player? Is that Something about right? Something like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good officiating crew for us on the floor tonight. Keeping a close eye on this one. High physicality and intensity. Soul. Not much of a three-point shooter at Boston College has added that, or trying to anyway, to her repertoire. But boy, Notre Dame is all over Kitley anytime she gets the ball. Another offensive rebound, though. That Ooh. shot hasn't worked for Miles, and Kitley just got hammered. Oh, yeah. Just runs through it, catches her in the face a little bit, too, I think. Second personal foul on Bransford coming through. Eighth rebound for Kitley. It's the first quarter. She heads to the free throw line. Two points in the game so far, and Bransford back on the bench with those two fouls. Now Virginia Tech in the bonus to finish the quarter. Points now for Kitley, six point lead, Virginia Tech. Hokies a perfect 10 0 on the season so far. The only blemish for Notre Dame, that buzzer beater in the loss to Maryland. And they followed that up with a win against UConn. Amor saw Kayla King open off the front of the rim. Miles right down the lane, and she is fouled by Soul. We've got a college basketball doubleheader for you on Wednesday night here on ACCN and the ESPN at Men's Stoops. This time, 24th ranked Virginia Tech taking on Boston College. That's at 6.30. Then it is Florida State and Notre Dame in Tallahassee. The final games for these teams before their holiday break. As you alluded to, that can be a tricky time for teams. You're, you're probably in final exams or midterm exams. you are got a break looming. And yet, for this game in particular, look at what a big game this is. Try to stay focused. Yeah, absolutely. Stay focused and also just want to enjoy your holiday with a win. When you have off days, you want to win before that. <laughs> Miles has her first point in the game. She is the leading scorer for the Irish on the season, averaging 16. Of course, also leads them in assists and rebounds. Your point guard leading your yeah. rebounds. Well, that's why she is a <laughs> consistent triple-double threat. And good work by Amor to keep this in possession, not turn it over. Then she flies into the basket. She hit another gear on that one. Nice change of pace, great finish. Speaking triple-double, she had one earlier this season, first in Hokie history. There's the first field goal for Miles. 
as the only two players who have had a triple-double in the ACC this year go back-to-back -back with buckets on each end of the floor. Amor's triple-double, I believe, was her career high in every category at that time. About 40 seconds left in what has been a highly entertaining first quarter. Nothing coming easy either way. Can defense turn to offense for the Hokies? There's that other gear from Amor again. Miles, you can see her looking all over the floor. Mabry, the one she finds. The crowd makes it pretty clear which way our officials are pointing. <laughs> Kantner, Pilani, Spurlock, Welsh, Bruce, and Morris, our officiating crew for this one today. Tech here with a chance for the final basket of the first quarter. Crowd counting him down. Amor being defended well. Greg has her time nice. and space makes the shot. That was a nice, patient execution. The crowd here in Blacksburg loving what they're seeing so far. First ever top 10 matchup in women's basketball history at Castle Coliseum. Sees the Hokies out in front. As we get ready to start our second quarter here in Blacksburg, we do want to take a moment and honor one of the legends of our game who we lost earlier this week, Billy Moore, a true trailblazer in women's basketball. She led the first U.S. Olympic women's basketball team to silver in 1976. She is a Hall of Famer, won national championships, the first to ever do so at two different schools. So we certainly want to just take a moment and honor all that she has meant to our game. And hate to see her go. But this, this type of matchup, this is exactly what those people who laid the path for women's basketball hope to see it become, first time ever. We see a top 10 matchup in women's hoops on this floor here in Blacksburg. And it was a first quarter where Notre Dame really just struggled to find themselves, especially offensively. It's a beautiful high-low execution right there. Six points in the game for Kitley, reigning ACC Player of the Week, reigning ACC Player of the Year. Little out of control as Watson trying to make her way to the basket. That's a good flash of the high post, just the easy feed to the big target down low and a nice finish. Kitley, calm under pressure. Greg on the floor to start the second quarter for the Hokies. Ebo also out on the floor to start quarter number two for Notre Dame. Miles with the ball in her hands. Citron back out, starter for the Irish. Not much flow here for this Notre Dame offense. They're kind of like searching for, for something. Kayla King still down behind the play, was holding her ankle. She trots back down the floor. Amor has just been moving at lightning speed here this afternoon. Three-second violation turns it over. as I mentioned, have won 10 of the last 11 in this series, three in a row. Trying to find their footing here in Blacksburg. That'll do. Great footwork. She's efficient down low on that block. It might be nice for them to keep going back inside for a little bit and getting something, getting something good. Yeah, Ebo coming off a 17-point game for the Irish. Win against Merrimack in their last game. Miles. Got to Citron, and that is good for two more for Notre Dame as Virginia Tech 
trying to do something they haven't done too often, and that is find success against a top five opponent. Only done it twice all time. Jump ball called here. Jump ball. But you think about Jazz, this program climbing, a lot of hopes and dreams on the line for the team this season. They're a veteran team. They were picked second in the ACC preseason. They were picked 13th in the AP preseason poll. Both of those, their best ever. So a lot is expected. But to do that, you got to knock off some of these big time top five ranked opponents. For sure. I mean, they've had their success the right way, though. They have the experience. They have the chemistry. Uh, Coach Brooks, you know, he has a great group of women right here, and they're, they're showing that. And that is one. And Kitley, who he spends a lot of time, we saw him out there, as he does most days, working one-on-one -on -one with Kitley before the game. You give her an easy look like that, good night. Ebo. It's a good battle in the paint, but it's an offensive foul on Ebo. Your center taking a charge? It's contagious. <laughs> I love to see Notre Dame go in and, you know, put the pressure on Kitley to defend without fouling, but there she takes a great charge. Is that three? I think charges. Three charges. The Hokies have drawn. Let's keep track of those. My lover of defense over here. I'm counting on you for that. <laughs> All right. Soul crossing over, swatted by Westbell. Remember this Notre Dame team averaging over 88 points per game that ranks top six in the country, top two in the ACC coming into today. Amor picking up the foul on the play as Watson is trying to go to the basket. It was on the floor, so it'll be Notre Dame ball under the basket. Citron picked up a dribble, finds Westbell, lines it up for two. Stringing together some points here now, Notre Dame. Both of these teams will say they're balanced. They like the unselfishness of their group. That's a word Kenny Brooks uses a lot for this Virginia Tech team. Kitley, of course, the focal point. Little shot fake. Now to trailer in the corner. King, not just a three-point shooter, Kayla King. Olivia Miles back downhill to lead the break. Shot fake on this end. It's Citron. She's fouled. Basket will not count. That's a second on Amor. Citron kind of picked it up, but. Her teammate was right there to put in the pull-up jumper. Now, you mentioned that Notre Dame hasn't quite found that rhythm to get clicking yet. They started three of 16 from the floor. They've made their last three, and actually they made two more than that. That just didn't count because there was a foul beforehand. Part of it is just letting the game settle. They did get some looks that I'm sure they will be happy with on any day. Um, they just weren't falling early, and now kind of settled down, went inside back to back, and, you know, settled into the game. Good defense. I was going to say the same thing. Notre Dame looking like they picked up their intensity on defense a little bit. Mabry working to try to stay with Trailer. The screen from Kitley got the three-point look. Miles between the legs. I mean, you never know what flash Miles might pull out at any moment. I like to see her sit in that shot a little more. It's like she, you know, saw it going in already and kind of backpedaled too soon. Kitley is fouled. She'll head to the free throw line. It's a five-point lead for the Hokies. Holidays are coming. One of these teams looking for an early gift. Liz Kitley, this week's ACC Player of the Week. She is off to a great start, showing you her face-up game, finishing around the rim down low. She already has 10 rebounds.
rebound. She's well on pace to another double-double. Yeah, already eight double-doubles on the season for Kitley. That leads the ACC, ranks third in the country. And if she hits her free throws, and she's a pretty good free throw shooter, about 77% on the season, she will get double-double number nine. That's her first miss from the line tonight, two for three. Second one is good, so nine points in the game now for Kitley. Notre Dame trying to come back from a season low, nine points in that first quarter. They have looked better getting into their offense as this game has gone on, but you see Kitley, they are doing the defending on Watson. It's tough to get inside, and they haven't gotten many good looks on the outside. King had her shot blocked by Citron. Miles Caesar. And King, great recovery to get back down the floor, poke it out of bounds. Wednesday is National Signing Day for football. We've got you covered right here in ACC Network and the ESPN app. The Huddle will have their annual special breaking down all the ACC recruits. Coverage of our one-hour show beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. Matt Marshall into the game for the Irish. Aaron Mabry, the only starter who had not scored for Notre Dame to that point, now joins the party. Looking to get her shot to fall. They don't want to give her too many open looks, that's for sure. Definitely true. One of the best three point shooters in the league. Marshall had the ball in her hands. Soul looks like it takes her about four steps to get all the way down the court. It is physical out there. Yeah. Both teams really attacking the glass hard. <laughs> She sees only one defender in front of her, tries to go through her chest, but teammates there tried to come up with it, but it'll go to Notre Dame. Well, don't let the calendar fool you. It might be December, but what you're looking at here, remember, whatever happens here in Blacksburg today could mean a lot down the road in terms of ACC standings, in terms of NCAA implications. I mean, these two teams, whether they will outwardly say it or not, I think most would agree have Final Four type aspirations, and they've got the talent to do it. Yeah, for sure. Coach Brooks even mentioned earlier during shoot around that that's pretty much what happened last season. They lost the head to head, and it came down at the end of the season. It, you know, it bit them in the butt. So, yeah, the difference between a double bye or not in the ACC tournament. Notre Dame got it, Virginia Tech did not. So, got the shot off, couldn't get the rim or for the ball to go in, so it is a shot clock violation. Good defensive possession for Notre Dame. Just like Jazz would have drawn it up. Good defense so far. I think that's been the story, hasn't it? I mean, both teams have really brought it on the defensive end. They've had to, and I think Notre Dame not scoring, not starting the game, scoring the way that they usually would, forced them to have to play even better defense. Maybe a couple of baskets back to back in this quarter. Well, the Hokies have gone a bit cold on this end, though. They've missed the last seven. Crowd trying to get them back in the flow. You never know it, but the students are on break right now here at Virginia Tech. It is a great crowd supporting this team, taking in this historic game. First time ever they've seen two women's teams ranked in the top ten face off here. Kitley loves that baseline jumper off the inbounds. Yeah, they've gotten it to her about three times, I think, already this game. Mabry sees Citron in the corner, wide open. Oh. Did you mention physicality, intensity? Yeah. 
Both teams showing how much they wanted. They are going after every loose ball, going, going into the paint tough. Second personal foul on Maddie Westfeld on that last play that had Taylor Sewell's limbs all akimbo as she tried to hang on. You need a basket. Number 33 is a pretty good place to go. She's not afraid to pass it back out either, but at least nothing doing. Sewell taking matters into her own hands. She can take her time a little bit, and, you know, just get her composure and go back up strong, but it's nice to see her not give up on that play. She comes in strong, comes up with the loose ball, gets it back again, loose foul. That'll send Taylor Soul to the free throw line, and it is the third personal on Westbelt. A couple of fouls she picked up quickly there. That'll be something to watch as this one goes on. Coach Ivy mis mentioned uh, Westbelt as one of her defenders that she's relying on, so definitely could hurt Notre Dame to see her pick up some foul trouble. Second free throw, good. And here's what the Irish have to be wary of. Westbelt with three. Did come off the floor. Marshall back on in her place to go out there as well. Lebo had the size advantage with the mismatch, but the double team did its job defensively. Seven to shoot. Miles looks up and sees it. Nice. Dumps it. Last nice. Second to Ebo. That's how it's done. One second. <laughs> Just like they planned. Deja Gray committing the foul. That'll put Ebo on the free throw line. Attacks, draws the defender, finds Ebo coming in. 53% finisher. Chance to convert three point play. Yeah, Ebo has been such a big addition to this Notre Dame team this year. Now losing Maya Dodson, wondering who is going to try to fill that gap inside, and she has been a big part of it as a grad transfer coming over from Texas, originally started her career at Penn State. But she has wound up playing a very big role off the bench for the Irish. Sewell, Hokies now miss their last 11. They've gotten a couple of free throws, make it 12. They just cannot find a basket. Game. The Irish have never led. They have a chance to take the lead here before halftime. Eight on the shot clock. Miles takes the shot. Perhaps the Hokies can break the tie. more nope it's low scoring but maybe not too surprising that we are tied after our first half top 10 matchup between these two teams number five notre dame coming in number six virginia tech the offense going a little cold it's been a defensive battle so far as we're now joined by Virginia Tech head coach Kenny Brooks. Kenny, defense has been the story so far. How would you like to see that storyline change or turn in the second half? Yeah, we need to get a better flow on the offensive end. I thought we uh, we lost a little bit of momentum when Georgia picked up her second foul, but you know, everyone has to step up in these situations. So, you know, it's two teams that are going to be very, very physical. They're going to battle with each other, and uh, I think we were just trying to fill each other out, and I think the second half will be a little bit different. 
Uh, what do you tell your team at halftime right now coming back out? It, it's going to be 0-0 again, but knowing that Notre Dame's going to come out and try to get their offense going, how do you keep them focused? Yeah, we're, we're going to try to get our offense going as well. But it, it's just a situation where I thought we missed some opportunities where we could have gotten some 50-50 balls. We got our hands on it, but we didn't really pull it in. A game like today, you got to secure opportunities like that. Coach, Thanks, thank Scott. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We are all tied after our first half. Still plenty more to play from Blacksburg. Studio will have you covered for halftime. Jasmine, thanks so much. Welcome into this ACC. Quiet out in the streets of Blacksburg, as it should be. Why would you want to be out there? It's cold when you could be in here in this top 10 matchup in women's basketball. Jen Hildreth, Jasmine Thomas. Very defensive first half of basketball, Jasmine, that we saw. What do you think is the reason each team kind of struggled to get a rhythm? I mean, I think just that, the defense. Both teams went into this game with a defensive focus, and because of that, we see not a lot of shots being made. We see a lot of tough shots being taken, and I think that's what we have here. This may be one of those grinded out type games. We'll see, but this is a Notre Dame team that averages 88 points per game. Their most consistent player in the first half was Lauren Ebo. Yeah, Lauren Ebo is 100% from the floor. She's leading the Irish with seven. When they couldn't get anything going, they could definitely go to her and she, you know, put some points on the board for them. Then you have Kitley. The Hokies are relying on her offense. In the first half, she had nine points to go along with 13 rebounds, kind of showing all of what she can do down low and stretching out some range a little bit. Now, Kitley, a point away from a double-double, already has 13 rebounds in the first half to go along with nine points. But both teams locked up at 22 after the first half. Virginia Tech, the team we talked about coming in, hanging their hats on defense, but it's really been both teams that have struggled to get their offense going. We'll see if they adjust, amend that somewhat in the second half. Kitley takes the first shot and is fouled, and that is the third personal against Watson. No surprise there that the Hokies go straight into the ACC Player of the Week to start the half. And perhaps recognizing also Watson defending her. Notre Dame has a couple of players flirting with foul trouble. Watson now securely there. Second miss from the line tonight for Kitley. She was three for four in the first half from the charity strike. And now, indeed, she has her 43rd career double-double, ninth of the season that leads the ACC. She had eight coming into today, which ranked third in the country. Citron turns the corner nicely for Notre Dame. It would be nice to see her get going. That's a, a great take. That play was obviously designed for her to have that lane and that layup, and she puts it in. Now, Citron, a player that averages 15.4 per game for the Irish. Good sophomore year. Miles a little off in the first half for Notre Dame. Gets it to Watson. She's got to take her time and finish that one. Irish right now playing with their first lead of the game. They never led in that first half. See if they can hang on to it as Miles goes between the legs back to Citron. Now Westbelt. Another one of those players has to be careful with her fouls. There's nothing whistled there. A little stuff up from Kitley, but no whistle from our referee crew. Westfeld and Watson on the inside, both with three fouls. Both staying on the floor right now for Notre Dame. How important is Georgia A more to this Virginia Tech offense's shot clock winding down. King can't quite hang on to the shot from Kitley. Heard Kenny Brooks talk about Amor's absence when she had a couple of fouls in the first half and how it affected them. And she's the floor general. You can see she has a nice confidence to her. She gets everybody where they're supposed to be. She gets the, the ball moving. And so it's definitely important for them to have her on the floor. Trailer open in the corner for nice. three. You love the good to great for the corner three. Passing up the good for the great look. Is that what yep, you're that's going what we with that? Okay. Good to great. And Virginia Tech had missed her last 15 field goal attempts before that make. Boy, they needed it. That's an understatement. Now the offense leading to some defense. Hokies back out in front. Oh, 
Kenny Moore. Working against Mabry. Nice. Holds up, it's good. <laughs> it's a nice step back jumper. It almost looked like she got it caught on like her, her knee or on. Whatever it did, it worked. Yeah. <laughs> good to great from King to trailer. Sinks the corner three. Amor here. Uh-oh, Hezzy. Okay, step back. Knocks down the jumper. Westfeld, open look. Four points in the game for Maddie Westfeld. Averages just under nine for the season. Two-point game. Right to the importance of Amor for Virginia Tech. Still without Ashley Owusu as Sol glides to the basket. That foul trouble coming into play here for Notre Dame. Not able to contest drives the way that they want. That's a nice, strong, straight line drive from Sol. Crowd likes it too. Remember that Virginia Tech has beaten a top five team just twice in program history. It is no easy feat as Ebo continues her good day. Nine points in the game now. I like her decision making to play with a little bit of space. Instead of just trying to pound and go straight up through Kitley, she's, you know, trying to get around her. Travel, turnover, back to Notre Dame. And there you see Awusu still on the bench. Kenny Brooks telling us had surgery, set broken finger on her right hand. Expect maybe mid-January, chance to get back out on the court. Transfer joining the Hokies this year from Maryland. Got to shout out my Northern Virginia kid. She's from Woodbridge, a little down the road from where I'm from. Back in your home state, you're allowed to do that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Evo working against Kitley. Got the friendly roll. She is really having a nice game here today. Yeah, perfect from the floor so far. Yep. Five for five. Tie game again. Blocked. Westbell picked up by Mabry. Dare I say the offense picking up for both teams a little bit just as we get the foul called against Bransford. That is her third personal. Lauren Ebo showing some patience and footwork down low in the post. And the nice block there without fouling. Yeah, without fouling, key. Now there are three players for Notre Dame with three fouls. Trailer, easy look. She had a quiet first half. Uh, be interesting to see if she gets going here a little bit. She can definitely score in bunches. In the loss in South Bend last year, Trailer led Virginia Tech with 16. Mabry. Trailer working the glass too. And now beating everybody down the floor. Oh. Just enough of a presence from Citron to throw her off. Pace has really picked up a little bit. <laughs> Does that favor one team over another, do you think? I mean, they both like to play with pace. They both like to shoot transition threes and really share the ball, but it's definitely in Notre Dame's game plan to have this a faster game. Bransford. Two-point lead for Virginia Tech as we take a quick break here from Blacksburg. Great atmosphere here inside Castle Coliseum this afternoon, as it should be for this matchup. Five against six, but fifth-ranked Notre Dame trailing sixth-ranked Virginia Tech. That matchup on the inside, one we thought might be good coming into this one. Those are the season numbers for Lauren Ebo and Liz Kitley, and those two players right now both leading their teams respectively in scoring in this game today. Yeah, I mean, Lauren Ebo in, in just 11 minutes is five for five from the floor. So she's <laughs> definitely having a great game. She could probably have a few more rebounds with that size she <laughs> she's has. She's making all her <laughs> shots. She didn't, there's no rebounds for her to get. Kitley yeah. with the double-double. 16 boards, my goodness. Bransford at the free throw line. And it's smooth, you know? It's just, it's within the game plan and, you know, she's just fun to watch. Kayla King picking up the foul on the last play before we went to break there. That's what put Bransford on the line, where she picks up one. That's her first point of the game. Makes it a one-point game. This 
one has stayed close. Both teams have had some offensive woes. Amor! Nothing woeful about that shot. Little bestie connection right there. <laughs> Double digits now for Amor. Ebo, five to shoot. One on one with Kitley, takes the shot. Not just a miss. <laughs> six for six, on she goes. Yes, great touch on that. Six points in this quarter alone for Ebo. Great. Well, the Hokies had been starting to find that three point stroke, not this time. Kitley to Amor, who knocks down the three. And on the other end, about four seconds left, you have Eva with the soft touch up and over Kitley for her sixth field goal, 100% from the floor. She's coming off 17 point performance where she was four of five, nine and nine from the free throw line in Notre Dame's last game just over a week ago against Merrimack. Amor. Oh! Got it again! Uh-oh, she's feeling it now. <laughs> Hokie started two of 15 from downtown in the first half. They've made three of their last four. Amor with two of those. Taylor Soul getting this crowd into it. They are responding loud in here. Oh, oh, they feel good. <laughs> well, Soul might have been pumping them up, but this three-pointer helped too. Back-to-back yeah. -back threes. Why not? Georgia Amor having a good game. And Kayla King, though, in a bit of foul trouble, picking up that last foul for the Hokies. But Sol, it's her second charge. I mean, this has been a continuous storyline throughout. The Hokies drawing the charges from the Irish. Big step, anticipated it. Oh, could be moving just a little bit, but I like the sacrifice there. Established position, right? Yeah. Established that defensive position and forces Citron to commit the foul. Fifth offensive foul, if you're keeping track at home with us, that the Hokies have lured the Irish into. Oh, saw what she was, I mean, all of us saw what she was looking for. <laughs> Defense included. Nice. Miles inside to oh. Westbound. You know, one thing, and you talked about this, Jazz, when we were looking at this game earlier, that the experience on this Notre Dame team at times, they may be young in some ways, but they played in big games and they don't panic. Yeah, they don't. Um, I mean, they're just sticking with it. You know, no matter what's happening on the floor, they're, they get a stop or if they get to get out and, and do what they want to do, which is they have rim running posts and that's part of their identity. And there you see them just executing something they do all the time. Ebo grabbing the rebound. There you go. You there wanted you go. her to pick up she her has rebound. two now. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to see a little better effort there. You got oh, it. And Miles go. drains the three. She has really been struggling to find her groove. She gets the assist to Westbelt, falls it up with a triple, and ties this game at 38. Would like to see her be more aggressive offensively, maybe. You know, we know she loves to pass. She's a great, talented passer, but. You know, when her team's maybe struggling to score a bit, she can take on some of that. She's definitely capable of scoring in bunches, too. First made three for the Irish today. They're one for six as Sol can't get it to fall. Miles was one for eight from the floor in the first half. Led the Irish against the Hokies last year in their only meeting in South Bend, 24 in that game. Amor, quick love, to the rim and in. I love her change of speed. She plays with such great pace and tempo. 15 points in the game for Amor. 10 of those coming in quarter number three. Tech leading by two.
We said welcome back to the offense in quarter number three, particularly Georgia Amor for Virginia Tech. Yeah, she's doing a little bit of everything. You know, she's shooting the three, off the dribble, off the catch, getting her teammates involved. She has four assists. She has 15 points. She's three of six from the three-point line. She's having a great game today. Trying to lead this team to what could be a very significant win by season's end, despite this being early and in December, Amor quite aware of what this could mean for this program this season. Notre Dame ranked number five in the country. And Virginia Tech two and 56 all time against the top five. This is their first ranked opponent. They said they were ready. We'll see how it all finishes out. Ebo, that's her first miss. Had the hands of Kitley in her face. The other thing about Amor is that speed when she chooses to get to that next gear. Yeah, she's quick. A little crossover, too. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> really, she's feeling it. Georgia Amor came to play today. Five point Virginia Tech lead under a minute to play in the third quarter. They've nearly matched their scoring Virginia Tech from the first half in this third quarter. Gets what she might think is a mismatch, pulls it back, hits the three. Virginia Tech ball now. 21 points in this quarter, 22 points in the first half for Virginia Tech. We set this up as potentially an offense-defense storyline, but it was Notre Dame, the offense we were talking about, the Irish, one of the highest scoring teams in the country, top six, averaging over 88 per game, not today. No way. Woo. I mean, I know this place was about to erupt. I think you I was, was too. too, yeah. That was a little heat check, I think, for Amor. Six points in the game for Citron, asking for a screen. A little out of control. Both parties, this is a blocking foul against Virginia Tech. Right idea here, saw what she saw, but just a little late, didn't quite get in front of her and get set. And credit Citron there for getting to the space first. I mean, Namor certainly willing to give it a try, but instead she picks up her third personal. 5.6 left in the quarter. Citron gets it off the inbounds, off nice. the glass and in. Virginia Tech will take the lead into the fourth quarter, thanks to Amor. Really feeling herself right now. She's got it going from the three. She is on fire. ACC Women's Hoops action continuing after this game. We'll take you out to Raleigh, Clemson, and eighth-ranked NC State. Tip off for that one coming your way at 6 p.m. Eastern. Four teams ranked in the top 25 right now. Of course, we've got two of them right here, five and six. Notre Dame and Virginia Tech, NC State 8. North Carolina picked up a win yesterday, or Friday, excuse me. Ebo knew exactly where she wanted to go, and nobody was stopping her. 15 in the game for Ebo, coming off a 17-point effort in the last game for the Irish. Amor, 13 points in the third quarter for Virginia Tech. Has it in her hand again, knocked nice. away by Miles. It's a nice strip there. Miles in the open floor, special things can happen. Gotta be ready. Good recovery from Citron and Westbelt. Gets the bucket, puts Notre Dame in front. All right, back and forth we go. What a quarter this should be. A lot on the line for these two teams. ACC opener for Notre Dame. Second conference game for Virginia Tech. They're 1-0. 
Oh, a more too open maybe that time. I love that decision by Taylor Soul though to make that extra pass to her teammate who's you know shooting the three well, having a good game. Yeah, three triples for Amore in that third quarter. We were looking at the numbers. Liz Kitley only took one field goal attempt in the third quarter. <laughs> you said, well, she didn't really need to. Amore was taken over. Miles, that's the Olivia oh Miles you know Notre Dame can rely on. We'd like to see her do more of that. Kind of hard when she's going into Kitley with that size, but when she can kind of get behind the defense before someone can rotate over and get to the basket, She's dangerous. <laughs> Saw the opening, beat Kitley to the basket, and finished at the rim. Well, that last play, trailer drive into the basket. He wondered if it would be Citron or Westfeld who got called for the foul. It was Citron, much to the relief of Notre Dame, as Westfeld already has three second personal. On I, didn't, Citron. I didn't pay attention. Did she raise her hand? You know, that's one of those, <laughs> yeah, like, me. OG moves. Like, oh, no, <laughs> give me that one. Yeah, I, I don't recall. <laughs> she may have. A lot of contact there going for the rebound. Now, this one, however, did involve Westbelt. It was against Maddie Westbelt. That's her fourth. She and Sol getting tangled up for the rebound. Yeah, it's, a, it's the right call. She was going down, took Sol down with her and gets called for it. And now she goes to the bench. And you said it earlier, there's the offensive force. She's got eight points in the game, which is right about her average, but her defense too, the presence that she provides. Something Notre Dame will miss. the moment. Westfeld on the bench for those four fouls. KK Bransford back in, the freshman in the pink shoes, trying to defend Seoul here for the Irish. Mabry working off the Ebo screen. Seventeen rebounds in the game for Kitley. She gets the ball back in possession of the Hokies. Amor. Ooh. Maybe one more dribble there, one more step. Miles on this end. There yeah, there it is. She's great in transition. One of the great battles looking at this matchup was at the point, and Amar owned that third quarter. 13 points in the quarter for the Hokies. Could the fourth quarter belong to Miles? We'll see. Four-point lead for the Irish as Kitley answers back. Her first field goal of the second half. She took her little break in the third. She's ready, been ready now here in the fourth. Ebo gets it back inside. Kitley defending. Does enough. Pulls down, rebound number 18. You can see both teams being really intentional about their offense right now here in the last six minutes of the game. Kitley gets another basket. Ties it up at 48. Fourth tie of the game. We've had three lead changes. Crowd making some noise in Castle. Miles over Ooh. Kitley and in. Six points in the quarter for Miles. She must have heard me earlier when I said, maybe not the ones where she drives into Kitley. There she <laughs> does a tough finish over top of her. Irish back out in front. Amor on the move, gets inside. Can't get it to fall in this fourth quarter after she was red hot in quarter number three.
Westfeld and Watson both getting set to check in for Notre Dame. Westfeld with four fouls, Watson with three. Miles. Continue to look for a teammate. Citron gets a chance to add another. That's great offense. I love Miles keeping her dribble and kind of gnashing that baseline and finding her teammate diving in for the end one. Fourth foul on Kayla King here as she tries to draw the charge. Takes out the mismatch. Citron diving down the middle, finishes through contact. The Irish typically very good this season at getting to the free throw line. Number one in the country, they average over 20 free throw makes per game. Just five for eight today. Make it six for nine now. Big one there from Citron. Largest lead of the game for the Irish. Amor. That's gone a little cold here. Miles to Westfeld, who's just come back into the game. Trailer, a little out of control as Mabry just hounding her defensively. What do you want from Virginia Tech here? Uh, Kitley. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, she gets it. Watson, let her repost. Maybe, huh? Yeah, I and think maybe. that's a repost right there. Space it out to the corner. Make your defender come out and guard you again and get it back in. Miles starting to heat up. She's made a couple and she's found her teammates. Dara Mabry and Notre Dame taking the lead here in the fourth on the road in Blacksburg. Olivia Miles starting to heat up in the fourth quarter for Notre Dame. Yeah, she started the first half and was struggling a bit, but here you see her get it going downhill to the rim. Um, she's four or five, her last field goals, and has four assists, and you see the nice dish there to Sonia Citron on the layup. Yeah, those numbers, so you guys are with us here, fourth quarter numbers, four or five for Miles, four assists, and you can see once again flirting with that triple-double. She's that type of player where every night it seems like she could have a triple double. So Virginia Tech, last time you said they got to find Kitley. Now as they see the step is that continue to grow, you think she's got to be a part of it. More foul as she comes through. Mabry committing the foul. Kind of see that again. An elbow poked in the eye, not really sure. Mabry frightened through that screen. I think got her in the eye a little bit. Amor was the story, really, for Virginia Tech in the third quarter. Not quite as hot. Got a little cold in the fourth. We'll see how this maybe affects her. Oh, yeah. Hope the eyes, no fun there. So our officiating crew is taking a look at this. I think maybe it was intentional. Yeah, that's you would imagine what they're looking for. D. Cantner over at the table. When you can understand arms flying, you're trying to fight through a screen, right? Initially, I think that's what it looked like, but any sort of contact to the face, they will have an opportunity to look at here. Which is fair. I think that's exactly what they should do. Um, it looked to me just like fighting through a screen. Um, you know, she did get hit, so maybe flailed a little bit. Maybe trying to sell that call of a moving screen kind of led to that. So potentially could see it was called a common foul. Could see it upgraded to an intentional foul. Really trying to sell that screen.
Well, the good thing is, is that Amor looks like she's okay. And she's getting a little so, extra time yeah. to uh, <laughs> get the eye feeling right. CD shaking her head. Don't think she sees anything additional there to elevate. So it is just a common foul. Couldn't quite hear that explanation from D. Kantner, but that is the ruling. So nothing additional elevated there. We play on. 21 on the shot clock. Virginia Tech with the ball into the basket. Hopefully going to Kitley on the backside for that jumper. Now they're looking for it. There it is, Kitley. I mean, it's the right play. With the foul trouble that Notre Dame has, getting it into there. Their star center is the right play to make. Big test today for Virginia Tech. Have a chance to make a big statement, but they're going to have to catch up. As the Irish taking their largest lead of the game here in the fourth quarter. Watson. Kitley picks it up. King. She hasn't had much to say offensively in this game. No points for Kayla King. She averages 11. Hokies, no points. The last three trips down the floor. Six on the shot clock now for Trailer. There's that defense from Westbelt with four fouls. Gets the shot block. Maybe a bit of a force there. She got the defense to collapse on her. Maybe could have found a teammate. Virginia Tech go for the last five. The Irish on a 7-0 run. Miles. Rebound pulled down by Watson. The Hokies are definitely want to secure the defensive rebound in all loose balls. Approaching the two-minute mark. Miles with the shot clock running down for good measure. Eight points in this quarter for Olivia Miles. She has shown a bit of what she can do finishing at the basket. She has a nice finishing package. Kitley, no. And then there's a foul by Deja Gregg after the play. Well, we've got a college basketball doubleheader. Men's hoops on Wednesday here on ACCN. 24th ranked Virginia Tech taking on Boston College at 6.30. Then Florida State hosting Notre Dame in Tallahassee. Doubleheader Wednesday night right here on ACCN. 9-0 run now for the Irish. Jazz, what's happened here that's allowed Notre Dame to just kind of take control and quiet this crowd? I mean, Olivia Miles has happened. Um, you know, she's had a great quarter, um, has really kind of been the reason to spearhead this run that Notre Dame has been on. But also the Hokies have gone cold. They haven't been able to score. Five to shoot for the Irish. No rush for Miles. Takes her time off the front of the rim. Westfeld flicks it in right to Greg. Soul and a whole lot of trouble has it blocked. Miles, by the way, doing the honors. Greg for three. This has just not been Virginia Tech's quarter. Notre Dame leads the series 14 to two all time. Hokies thinking maybe this one's different. They come out on fire in the third quarter, but have gone cold here in the final 10. When we talk about that experience and that composure, Notre Dame showing a bit of the composure down the, down the stretch here. At this point in the season, perhaps a win in this matchup is just a big statement. But you can bet both teams will look back on this one later. What other implications might it have? An ACC standings, an NCAA seeding, 
We'll see. Timeout on the floor, under a minute to play, but Notre Dame in control. Look the hand, the Hokies, their first loss. We've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This winter, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic, take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion, and post it to your social. You just might see it on ACCN. There's some good fans out there. Notre Dame fans, what you got? Cheering on this team as Evo really led the way early, and Miles picked it up late, but look at the balance in that group too. Four and double figures. Which is surprising the way this game started out, how it went for most of the game. But to see them just, you know, stick to what they do, stick to their identity, sharing the ball, everyone getting involved. End with another balanced scoring game. But it's 50 seconds left, 49.7, let's see. It's an 11-0 Irish run over the last five minutes and change. Finally, a much-needed basket there from Amor. She has 20 in the game. Hokie's not ready to concede anything yet. Greg called for the foul. Had a foul to give, so probably smart foul, maybe. Yeah, fourth team foul of the quarter for Virginia Tech. So one more would put Notre Dame on the line, to your point. Certainly something to consider here. Notre Dame calling the timeout, nine-point lead. Rough shooting first half, especially that first quarter for Notre Dame, but got better as this one went along, didn't they? They absolutely did. They just stuck with it. You know, like I said, in the first half, they had some looks that were pretty good. They just didn't go in and then kind of found their rhythm and groove here in this second half. Now, Virginia Tech, meanwhile, just shooting 21% in the fourth quarter. There you see the numbers now. Next foul does put Notre Dame on the free throw line. One timeout left for the Hokies, two for Notre Dame. So what's going on in that Virginia Tech huddle? What are they talking about? Turn them over. I think that's their best chance is to try to turn them over and get some quick scores with how well Notre Dame shoots from the free throw line. Fouling will stop the clock, but not likely to get too many misses from them. Amor, King, Greg, all with four fouls for Virginia Tech. Westfeld has four for Notre Dame, and with that timeout, Notre Dame can advance the basketball, and they do. Citron just wants to take time off the clock, and then Miles says, come and get me. Perhaps a little embellishment on the foul there. <laughs> I mean, now I will say Taylor Sewell doesn't do anything lightly, but she came in hot. She did. <laughs> yeah, definitely sold it. Now that will put Miles on the free throw line. Wonder if she took a. Little Messi inspiration today. Argentina, <laughs> Little Messi winning the World Cup. She, soccer was her first love. Great article that you showed me on ESPN.com talks about that and how Olivia Miles still uses some of that vision and passing that she had as a soccer player on the basketball court. Irish six for nine from the line today. 7 to 10 now with that make from Miles. Irish good from the line. Some of the best in the ACC led by Citron. Miles right behind her, just under 80%, makes them both. Timeout. Virginia Tech, so the Hokies now can advance the ball. That's their last timeout. 33.2 left in the game. 
what do you think? Maybe a play for a shooter here? Well, I'm just about to ask you. I mean, time is of the essence, right? You know you've got that weapon in Kitley on the inside, but do they have to look for the three, do you think? They don't have to. Um, but you saw just the possession before, trying to turn them over, or trying to get the ball out of their hands. It ended up in a foul anyway, and they lost all that time. That's right. So I think go for a three here. Well, Virginia Tech shooting just 25% from three in the game. They're six for 24. One of the best three-point shooting teams in the league, though. They look to Kitley initially. There is Amor. Takes the three. Kitley the rebound. Puts it off the glass and in. And Notre Dame calls the timeout. Coach Ivy, I'm happy with something. And she can once again advance the basketball. Nine point Notre Dame lead as well as the Irish shoot it from the free throw line. They almost feel like Virginia Tech has to try to get that steal. They don't want to put them on the line. But running out of options with this much time left in the game. One timeout remaining for Notre Dame. Olivia Miles trying to seal the deal in Blacksburg tonight. 16 points, 13 rebounds, seven assists, five steals. Stuff in the stat sheet once again, and she did a lot of that stuffing here in the fourth quarter. Foul before Notre Dame can get it in. Taylor Soul, on a trailer, excuse me, committing the foul. That's going to put Mabry on the free throw line who is an 83% free throw shooter. She's only missed three all season. She's 15 for 18 on the year. But no time goes off the clock. And remind me of these rules. Sorry, I'm still very much in my WNBA mind. You would get the ball back. <laughs> they don't get the ball back. <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> That's all right. Not only intentional foul is going to do that so the ball will go back to Virginia Tech now but Mabry good for two there King no points yet tonight that doesn't change here typically such a reliable three-point threat in this game Virginia Tech probably felt they had the momentum they had all it took to win but in the end it is going to be Notre Dame Hanging on for the win, handing the Hokies their first loss of the season. It was a great game. I mean, it started off slow, but definitely got excited here in the second half. And I'm sure Notre Dame is happy with the growth that they had to be able to kind of trail for a lot of the game and not have the offensive showing that they wanted, but to end strong and come away with a win on their opponent's floor. 63-52, our final. Notre Dame improves to 9-1 overall, 1-0 in conference play. Virginia Tech 10-1, 1-1 in the ACC. So that's going to do it from Blacksburg. Much more women's hoops coming your way here on ACCN. We'll now send you to the studio.